everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost and it is Craft Chat answering your crafty questions plus picking a winner for the Scrappy Contest this week. That's right, I produce a lot of junk journal scraps and I am more than happy to pick a winner. Uh, anybody who posts a comment to last week's Craft Chat video, which falls on Friday, you will automatically be entered into this week's Scrappy Contest. So we will be pulling that. Today we're going to be, this is Pam playing with um, the Land of Forgotten Toys. Do you remember there was like a Christmas story with the Land of Forgotten Toys or the Island of Forgotten Toys? Well, these are Pam's Forgotten Toys, to her, her punches, and I'm trying to grab a different group of punches and play with them. Maybe I just played with you recently. I, I can't remember or, or I don't remember, but we have some new ones and uh, we're going to be making some, guess what, altered paper clips because uh, we... Um, in the paper outpost here. Need them because we are out of them. But first, first I want to show you something interesting that I found kind of creepy. Okay, we're post Halloween, but kind of creepy in my ephemera. Um, the old papers that I collect and different things like that. And uh, here it is. This is just a weird oddball thing. Now, this is an ad. I'm gonna show you the whole thing so you can see. From Quaker Oats. And it is, this valuable box comes free with every purchase of Quaker Oats. And I guess the idea is to show that you can make a little doll cradle out of it. But is it just me or is there something creepy about this? And that looks like a coffin. I don't know, maybe it's the pillow. It's throwing me. But it's just got creepy doll with creepy coffin pillow. And I just, I don't know, it kind of freaks me. And the gray background, it's grayish beige background, just... I don't know, there's something about it. I don't think they sold, um, oh yeah, they say it's a, it's a, that could be anything, a cradle for a dolly, an Indian tom-tom, -tom, a choo-choo train, a bank to hoard pennies, um, a strong box for aggies, I guess those are rocks, like pretty agates or something, like those polished rocks, a button box for mama, okay, well there, there, I could use that, I got I've got a serious button problem. I collect buttons like crazy. Um, a telephone if you save two. Okay. A wrapped in a scrap of fancy paper mama had saved the Christmas cookie jar you took to your teacher. Um, oh, and wrapped in a scrap of fancy paper mama had saved. That's funny. This mama saved scrappy paper. That's for sure. And that's a good old Quaker Oats box. Okay. Uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, anyway, if you want to make your own little creepy doll <laughs> cradle, feel free, have at it. I don't have one of these bo uh, two boxes, I guess, but I have seen them in the store. I could get one. All right, so let us make a... Um, okay, so what I've learned is that I accidentally click off my camera when I try and look at the comments and and stuff like that over there so i'm going to be very careful today and i've also moved my computer closer so i don't have to go so far and i'm going to see if i can just tilt you on the desk arm so i don't accidentally click off um but anyway let's so make some fun altered paper clips maybe you want to grab your um altered paper clip plan style thing whatever you're doing i'm just using i have some um uh, digi kits that I have uh, cut up here. These are just printed themed pictures of different types. It's fun to have some pre-cut and ready to go. These can be used individually, of course, but today we're going to be using them to make altered paper clips and, and different ways to do that. And one thing I thought I would bring into the milieu is um, some punches. And you may or may not have punches, doesn't matter, but if you do and they are living in the dark recess, recesses or the corners of your craft room, maybe today is the day to pull them out. I have this cool um, mason jar one and something's telling me maybe it doesn't work that well, but let's, let's just find out. Let's just go in and find out. Now these are very pretty, but um, I can print these off whenever I want, so I'm, I don't feel bad about punching them. And I did print these out on lightweight cardstock, so they should punch nicely. Uh, we'll just see. Let's see where this goes. Maybe I can get two out of here. Okay. And you can use the negatives too, you know. Uh, if, with your vast creative brains, you can just come up with something cool to use the negatives. They would be like cool little windows or something like that or fold it in half and you could have a little card with windows. That would be cool. Oh, see, now just have a, how cute are these? Look at look how cute. Okay. How cute! You could do this with scrapbook paper too. It doesn't have to be digi kits. But I'm just saying, you know, we always need new ideas um, 
to do things. So I am going to use some vintage oxide, vintage photo. That's the color, vintage photo. Shocker, I know. I don't know where my walnut stain. I've been using vintage photo like crazy, but um, vintage photo is just a little bit lighter than walnut stain, but it also gives a nice edging to things. So very nice, right? And um, just having some play time here, play time. Okay, let's answer a question while we're playing. Oh, where's my questions? Oh, here we go, comments. Oh, I had it all set up, where'd it go? Okay, hang on, I'm, I'm just, okay, there it is, yep. DH asks, new to this journal making art, totally enjoyed listening to you create, dipping a toe in over here with the question. I just received an illustrated, um, complete works of Shakespeare to work with. How, in exclamation points, or, or capitalized, does one cut, tear, break into a book to create from? Um, I keep holding it, looking at it, paging through it, and in my reckless abandon, it just isn't up to snuff. Um, how do you just go forth with so many of your truly vintage materials? Okay, that, take, that took some uh, training over time, I would say, to... Um, I had to take a good, long, hard look at what I was doing. I was starting to collect a lot of old and interesting papers. And then at some point I realized um, if I only kept them for myself, they could only inspire me and they couldn't inspire anybody else. Um, so I, I came to the understanding that I was freeing the papers from the book. If I put the book on my shelf and nobody ever looks at it and I don't read every single page of it, then I am not appreciating every page in that book. And um, while there is historic value in the contained nature of a book, um, I also realized that there's very great value in um, inspiring others, tickling others' fancy of history, having other people hold an old page from a book, having um, somebody else read a poem or a snippet from a play or... Um, you know, something that they may not come across in their daily life, but at that moment, sometimes it's just one or two lines that changes the way you think or see things moving forward. And if you have the whole book, sometimes it's overwhelm. It's almost too much where you're not going to sit down and read it from cover to cover, even though we'd like to think we do. And maybe some of us do. I'm, I'm putting that out there. But um, probably a lot of us don't. And you kind of have to be like, I, I, I in some way call myself a book butcher because I do cut up a lot of books. And at first I had this thing where I wouldn't go be like into the 1800s. I just thought it was sacrilege. I could not do that. And then I got over that because I thought, I, I felt like I was hoarding all these beautiful old book pages and they were just sitting there on my shelf and I wasn't able to share them or, or, it was just like, I don't know, it felt like a dead circle to me, like a, like a dead end, I guess that's what I'm saying. And um, uh, I know I'm not alone in um, paper love. <laughs> and sometimes just having one piece of something is really exciting. And I remember when I was first buying things, sometimes I could only afford to buy one piece, one page, one, one little thing, but holding it in my hand, it felt so precious and so amazing. And I just thought about you know, where this piece of paper has come from, what journey did it travel, and it inspired me to look for more and do more historical research and have fun, and off down the rabbit hole I went, and I started to pull it into my crafting, which really felt good. I felt like it was almost honoring that book more by putting it on a junk journal page, tucking it in there, using it somehow in the design where it breathed new life into it again. Um, and it, it became fun. And suddenly the pain of the thought of destroying a book started to vanish and it got easier and easier with time. And I've been going back in time even deeper. Um, so yeah, th there you go. Okay, so this one has roses on it and I have a little ro heart thing. So let's see what we get here. That's kind of cute. Or should we come from this way? That's kind of, nope, too short. All right, go there. Oh, get back up. Very cute, right? Yeah, I know. Um, so this is a, you know, the thing about having a tool, like a punch, you can make a lot of things from one tool. So if you're thinking about where you should invest your money, tools are, are a pretty good idea if you use them. Uh, a bunch of tools that you never use, not a good investment. And sometimes you don't know till you get the tool. And I understand that. 
Um, I am, I'm the purchaser of many unused tools or, or I get something and I think, oh, this is going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. And you use it a few times and you say to yourself, I'm never going to be using this very much. Boy, that wasn't a very good purchase. Yep, been there. <laughs> but you don't know until you, you try, right? So I would say, you know, maybe get some used tools from the thrift store before you, you invest in a giant amount in them or... Um, you know, kind of watch other people use them and see if it's something that you would really like to invest in one day that, that might make sense for you. Okay. Um, I'm get the scissors. This is pretty. Oh. I'm going to cut your board, or I'm just going to give you a border cut. You're pretty. Yeah, you're going to be a pretty little altered paper clip, little digi kid of birds. Yep. Don't know which one this came from, but it's it's cute. All right, let's answer another question. What else are you guys thinking? I love, I love getting into your minds and finding out what's going on there. Okay, Eva Mahoney says, love your channel. What more can I say that will get me into the contest? LOL, thanks, Pam. Yes, Eva, you are officially in the contest because you placed a comment. So be sure to watch to see if your name pops up. And uh, we got a good, uh, like over 500 comments for this last video. Um, the last craft chat, so it's good. And, and let's face it, your odds are way better than the lottery. Um, uh, when I was getting my nails done, uh, it was so cute. The, um, uh, the owners of the nail salon, they said something about it's a billion dollars, the, the lottery. I don't know if he was kidding or not, but he was going around to the other folks who work there and said, yes, give me your, give me your um, five bucks or something. I'm going to go buy lottery tickets for all of us. And, uh, you know, I was saying to him, you do realize your chances are better when the number's lower because fewer people are in there. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I just like to get excited about it. And I get that. I totally get that. We, we all need things we get excited about. Me, it's old papers. <laughs> Maybe it is you too. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys play the lottery? Is that something you do or not? I, um, I, you always, okay, here's a weird story. I may have told you this, but, um, uh, we decided to go on a diet and then we were spending less money on food because we weren't eating so much. So we decided the leftover money could be considered play money. And what I said was I was never really much of a lottery person, but what if we took that extra money, which we wouldn't notice because we were already spending it before and, and, and bought lottery tickets and just had fun and realized that if we didn't win, it was just fun money anyway but if we did win there you go big grand prize or or smidgen of prize um and uh so we played the lottery for a bit and I would say we definitely lost money but we had a few little wins nothing big but uh, enough to keep you tickled or uh, tintillated you know what I mean like enough to catch you coming back but then there was this what I would call the chore the chore of the lottery ticket um you got to go get them I mean, maybe there's ways you can do it online. I'm not that advanced. But then there's whether I get it at my grocery store and um, whether you go to the, the woman at the counter or you go to the little machine, um, it's time investment. And then, you know, like you're trying to pick numbers and then you're thinking, OK, well, how am I going to what are my what is my number strategy? Am I am I going to do the birthday thing? Am I going to do this? And I'm going to do random. I'm going to let the machine pick for me. And I'm thinking if the machine picks for me. And the machine picks the numbers. Doesn't the machine already know who's won? I don't know. It's just a weird thought I had. Um, so anyway, it would be interesting to see stats on how many lottery winners there are, how many were, what percent were picked by the machine and what percent were picked by the person just picking like favorite birthdays or, you know, their own random numbers, that type of thing. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just, you know what I mean? You know, um, maybe we could do a combined thing. Oh, that's kind of pretty. Oh, yeah, let's do something like that. Um, oh, I need a little extra piece of paper. Let me see. What do I need? See, now I can't find anything, right? I'm in this room of paper. There's no paper. Yes, there is, Pam. Go get paper. Okay, I'm being lazy. Roll over here. Just get a piece. Okay, I've got two pieces. Yep. All right, here we go. Oh, now I've got my glue gluing out. Okay, nope, don't be gluing out on me. It's it's like, nope, yeah, but we got glue on the finger now. Okay, that's all right. We'll put something down there. There we go. Okay, let's put you back in your little cradle. Oh, gluey finger. Help, help. Where's my little wet, wet nap? Hey, Sunny, how you doing? Sleeping, Mom, totally sleeping. Okay, yeah, I know. I get that. It's all right. And uh, let's see, we need a little backing for you, right? Not big, but something. 
Oh, I'll just have these scissors here. I'm just randomly cutting with these. Uh, so hope you're having fun today. Hope it's a crafty day. Hope uh, in your paper paradise there's peace and passion and pleasure and relaxation and unwinding and all those wonderful things that playing with paper can bring. All right, let us... Oh, see, this was like maybe a, a digi kit gone wrong, so I, I cut it up. And uh, you can use it for different things. Yes, yeah, so you're allowed. It's all right. Yeah, no, I won't mind. I, I take no offense. Yeah, as long as you're using the paper in some way and you're having fun with it, that's really all that matters. Okay, let's make something thinner here. Okay. Could we even layer this up more? <gasps> we could. All right, let's do that. Let's use what we have. That's right. Today is the day of using what we have and feeling darn good about it. That's right. Yes, this is a good thing. We are using what we have. Okay, there we go. Oh, I like that a lot. Yes. Um, all right, let's construct the digi kit. Now, I'm, I believe it or not, I'm running low on paper clips. That's right, especially these big ones. I must have made a lot. I think I did. And I, ne I need to buy more. I can't believe it because I remember buying the large paper clips going, oh, I'm never going to have to buy paper clips again. You know what I mean? And look at me having to buy paper clips again. There you go. It's 100 degrees in here. Why? Why? Why does the temperature go up when I talk to you guys? I think I get excited. <laughs> I think that's all it is. All right. So that's, that's how I did it. Okay. So, but I think the end result was really pretty. Okay. So let us carry on with extra little bits and bops that we have. And uh, let's answer another question. Remember, your focus, Pam. Stay focused. Okay. Um, Stimson Racing asks, what is the history of cigarette cards? Um, let's look it up to be sure. His, let's do all Google. Um, cigarette cards. I mean, basically, the way I understand them, and let's see if I know my stuff, is that... Um, it was a way for people to sell cigarettes uh, more. It became a way for people to collect things. They would be excited about getting their new cigarette pack with a new cigarette card in it, almost like tea cards or uh, anything like that where they became collectibles, then they became um, ephemera, then they became antique ephemera or vintage ephemera. And uh, people would, um, where I grew up, we had uh, red rose tea and you would uh, be so excited to get the little like ceramic figurine of a dog or something like that. And you would collect these and put them on your windowsill. That was a really big thing. And, um, okay, here we go. The origins of these cards can be traced back. This is official from, from Google, so you know it's true. Um, the origins of these cards can be traced back to the 1800s America when blank cards known as stiffeners were put into paper packs in order to stiffen the package and protect the cigarettes from being crushed. And they do have a picture of the decorated ones with the pretty, like there's one with cats on it and another one with an Indian on it and like beautiful artwork on it. So now, now I'm going to the big source. Wikipedia says, between 1875 and 1940s, the cigarette companies often included collectible cards with their packages of cigarettes. Cigarette card sets, uh, be, okay, I have to click on the thing. Hang on, we're going there. We're going there in the lightning speed of my internet. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, cigarette cards sets document popular culture from the turn of the century, often depicting the periods, actresses, costumes, sports, as well as offering insights into mainstream humor and cultural norms. So there you go. Um, yeah, it's a whole fascinating, I, I tell you, fascinating world to go down. If you've never explored cigarette cards or tea cards or anything like that, they're like small mini pieces of art. I would love to show you one, but do you think I have one close here? No, I have them up where my fundals are, not one right here. Um, well, that was effective, Pam. Um, okay, so we carry on, we carry on. <laughs> okay, back to the questions. Um, oh, this is funny. Marilyn Wolf Borgeson, Borgeson says, has anyone ever left a negative comment, question <laughs> mark? Um, uh, yes, and um, it, it's, I always think that, um, well, unless you're getting a few negative comments in here, you're probably uh, um, need to do more videos because eventually somebody's not going to agree with something. And I used to have um, what I would call um, a, a baby troll or a soft troll. You know who you are. Um, and, and she wasn't a mean person, but she was, I would say, 
critical. <laughs> yes. And, um, but I did have to, once I brushed off, you know, the injuries and the, the you know, emotional scars and wounds from the critique, um, I was left with was the, the question of, was there a thread of truth in what she said? And I had to look at it with, you know, honesty and say, maybe she's got a point, you know? And, and sometimes I thought she didn't, but sometimes I thought she did, and I had to re-examine and re-look at it. And did it throw my day? Did it, it make me curl up in a ball and cry? No, um, I can't say that, but um, I, I would say that um, I, when you put yourself on a YouTube channel, be prepared, not everybody's gonna love you, and that's okay. Um, some, I, the biggest one I get is, uh, you talk too much, or what's with the dog? Or, um, uh, and your stupid little squeaky voice, um, what are we, infants? We're not infants. We're, you're an adult. Talk to us like an adult. And um, that's okay. I'm fine with that. And you know what? Uh, that's the great thing about the internet is you can go and uh, you have the power to switch the channel. And um, that's great. So you can either spend your time like critiquing me or you can just go find another channel and have more fun there. And that's, as long as you're having fun, I'm good with that. So there you go. Um, so here we go. And so this is a, a digikit, but let's try and use it as a snowflake because this fits. There we go. Let's see if we got a snowflake. Oh, we got a snowflake. I thought maybe with the blues it might be a pretty snowflake. That's pretty, right? Okay, we'll put you in the possibility pile. Um, what am I going to do with all these negatives? And sometimes these like fancy foo-foo ones, they get stuck coming out because they're all fancy foo-foo and they have all these little tiny pieces that want to get hung up on the paper punch. So that's probably why I don't use the paper punches that much. But these... If you want to have a, an easy life with the paper punches, pick the more solid ones with a lot, out a lot of intricacy, and you'll be probably happier. Yes. Um, yeah. There we go. Okay. Put you in the negative pile, and um, let's see. There's another question. Heather R asks, "Do you ever make undecorated journals to sell? I prefer making ephemera to making the actual journals." A uh, great question, Heather. I actually used to make a lot of journal bundles where I would just make um, what I call blank or writing journals, which meant it was a naked journal or a journal that had the cover decorated, but you could decorate the insides. And I haven't done those in a while. I don't know why I haven't done those. You know how you just got, evolve and go through different things. But maybe I'll make some of those again because they were fun. And um, Will you fit? No, nope, too big. Um, I need bigger paper for these things. Okay, let's do you. And um, yes, so the answer is yes, but I haven't done it in a while, but you've reminded me of it, and maybe I'll do some of those in the future, because that is a fun thing. Um, I know everybody has different places what they like to do with the journals, and I go through waves. Sometimes I go through, I feel like making a new journal. I've got all these ideas. I'm all excited. See here, I'm fighting with the little fluffy stuff. Get in there and just go. Sometimes you have to rip it out if you get frustrated, but if you're patient, you can get it out without too much damage. All right, maybe I'll do a heifer. You can do heifers with these too. You don't always have to go the whole enchilada. It's a heifer. There. All right, what is that? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll put it to good use in some way, shape, or form. Um, we'll do another heifer. Maybe do a three quarter. Or, no, how much can I get? No, half that much. All right, I'll just take what I can get. I'm not being picky. I'm just, I'm just going for it. What the heck? All right. So next question. Um, Debbie Breen said, I really should re, re pre, if, if it's something I've answered a bunch of times, I'll, I'll pa pass on, but okay. Hi, Pam. Just love your journal page ideas. Have you ever thought of creating a medieval journal or a mystical journal? Like uh, I like to save all YouTubes and refer back to them. Thanks for the inspiration. Um, I love those themes. Um, uh, I do have, um, I did have, I think, medieval and mystical, but maybe not blatantly. Maybe there was nature and Victorian mixed in because I tend to do eclectic, mostly because um, I have... Uh, a big box of pre-made embellishments that I've done with the video. So I sort of draw from that and I never know what I'm going to pull. It's like a box of chocolates when you're pulling stuff out to make the journal. But I do have a lot of mystical and medieval elements. I actually have a digi kit called, um, now don't get it wrong, Pam. Mis is it called? No, it's called Magical. Hmm. Medieval and Magical. Yeah, that's one. And then there's Mystical Maidens, that's two. So there's some that cover those genre, if you will. Where's my scissors? And, um, hmm, I'll go get a new, another pair. The heck with you. Oh, there I see you, now you're hiding under the 
baby wipes. Yeah, just like you. Um, all right, I think we're ready to make another one. Let's see what we have little pieces here. So let's make something before we keep cutting more, Pam. Let's, let's make progress. We're going to make some of these handmade little paper, uh, altered paper clips. Okay, let's get another paper here. Okay, you're going to be the base. Fold you in half. Do I need to make you smaller? Let's see. Oh, that's kind of pretty, just as is. Richard. Okay, let's uh, ink you up a little bit more. More pop against the white. I think that would be pretty. Um, so are you thinking holidays? Are you thinking uh, just playing? And uh, don't forget to just play. You don't have to go heavy duty holiday, bataram, got to get all the, pre you know, no. It, you're still allowed to have fun, relax, unwind, and not feel <laughs> pressured during your crafting, which is always mission number one. Um, not to produce the goods. That's not the mission. The mission is for you to have fun and relax. And you know what the heck with them. If they don't like what you made, the heck with them. Um, and like I always say, you never really know if somebody likes something. Even if they say they like it, they're like, oh yeah, I really like it. Do you really like it? Come on, come on, let's, let's be honest here. Or are you just saying that to make me feel good, Aunt Martha? You know, um, and it's okay. You know what, you don't have to like it, but just know that I had fun while I made it, and I was thinking of you while I made it. And even if it ends up in a trash heap or at the next garage sale, it's okay. You know, it's okay because uh, there were fun times there, and uh, you just never know who will truly appreciate what. So you can't get all bent out of shape and hooked on that. Oh, I'm going to do something with you. I could do something. With, oh, that's kind of cute, like that, right? Yeah, let's do that. And, um, Yes, so we have to let it go. Let it just off into the ethers. Off it goes. Give it with love and let it go. And just keep having fun with your paper. Um, I guess I have a secret fear that one day there will be no paper. Um, because we're, everything's going to be digital and just paper will be gone. And I, I, I have a hard time with that. <laughs> I do. I have a hard time with that. So maybe that's why I'm collecting all these old papers. Oh, my little... I have a, somebody gave me some Nuka die cuts. Thank you so much. I have so many fun things here to play with that it's, it's, uh, these things need to be played with. You just pull them out. Let's pull out some bling. All right, got, there's the bling box. Um, let's pull these out and put some of them on here. Oh, that would be pretty. Oh, the green one, you want to come out and play? Oh, I, I can't hold on to them. Where are you going? Okay, this one has little tiny ones on it. Let's see if you're sticky enough to stay or you're just going to pop off. Because these, these little guys, sometimes they don't have the, the this really tiny. Um, it's really hard to pick up too. Okay, can you get it on there? Let's see, stick it on there. Oh, not bad. I got it on. Yay. Whoop. And let's grab another one. Okay, let's maybe grab. I like these gold ones. So they look nice on this with this color scheme. Okay, here we go. Down. Oh, no. Now, tweezers would really come in handy here. Which you do have. They're right there. You just get them. Okay, here we go. Getting the tweezers. Get, got the tweezers. All right, going to place. Now, you can put a little dollop of glue behind that, but these feel pretty secure, so I think I'm okay with that. Um, there, it just gives it a little something. Okay, and that's what it looks like on the back. And there. All right, let us carry on and um, answer another question. Where are we talking about? I have no idea. Oh, we're moving along. Okay. Um, all right. Maybe one more question and then we'll do the drawing. We'll do the drawing. Okay. Um, we did that one. Okay. We did that one. Okay. Uh, Pam, Rosalind asked, Pam, have you ever made your own stencils? If so, have you made a video and where do you get all your old documents? Okay. So um, have I ever made my old stencils? or my own stencils. Um, yes, I think I have, uh, but maybe not in the traditional sense, like um, taking a piece of acrylic and then drawing some shapes on them and cutting them out with a craft knife, or maybe you have a, a die puncher uh, or one of those electric die machines. Maybe I could even do it with my, um, my old uh, Sizzix Big Shot and just put some dies in there. Die, yeah. Yeah, the dies are the little metal things that you use to punch the shapes out. The die cuts are the little pieces of whatever it is that you punch. So I have a pile of dies, which I 
never play with, honestly. But um, maybe I could make some stencils out of acetate. We should try that. I don't know if that'll work, but you know what? We're going to try it. Somebody write that down. Write that down. We'll try that. Um, that might be a fun thing to do. Um, what else? There was a second half to that. Oh, where do you get all your old documents? Everywhere. And I think I've answered this before, so I'm not going to go into great detail, but... Um, um, Look everywhere, ask everyone, let them know what you're looking for, and then these things will start to appear in your world. They will bubble up to the surface, and then you can decide whether or not you want to buy them. There you go. That's the short answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we are going to do the contest now. So I'm clicking over to the YouTube random comment picker. I have already placed the video in there. We've got 532 comments, and now I'm going to attempt the movement of you in the desk arm. Oh, it's not going to work. I have to take you out. Dag nabbit. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can just move my computer. How about that? I didn't think about that. All right. Yeah. Hey, here's a better idea. All right. Here we go. Bring the computer to you. What? Rocket sign. Oh, look at that. There we go. Now we're talking apple bananas here. Okay. Here's, okay. We're going to hit the go. Whoop. Yeah. There we go. Get y'all nestled. Okay, and here I come. <gasps> who wins? Who wins? Watch the names. Whoop, watch the names. Watch the names. Watch the names. Oh, Sharon Wilson. Way to go, Sharon Wilson. Okay, Sharon Wilson, your job now is to contact me at pam at thepaperoutpost.com. That's my email address. And let me know you are the winner and that um, uh, I will send you your scrappy contest prize. Congratulations. Now, you need to contact me by Thursday of next week so that... Um, uh, that's how I just keep things rolling and uh, going smoothly. So you have six days to contact me. And I think that's six days, right? Um, and then we will pull a new contest winner next week. So there we go. All right, just hold on a sec. Okay, we have somebody who would like to say a little something to you here today. And uh, hello, uh, what is your name? My name is Sunshine and I'm coming in. I am a little close, but that's all right. We'll just roll with it. Okay, a little bright up here, Mom. Uh, little, okay, I'm in my Zen mode. I'm in my Zen mode, and I have a pup date. Yes, I have a pup. Well, it's actually, yeah, it's a pup date. Okay, so, Mom decided she was going to paint the grout in the house. Yep, and I wanted to participate a lot and walk in her fresh paint and then step over here and step over there. And I thought I was having a, a, ma a magnificent time, but mom, not so much, you know what I mean? She had this funny look on her face. And next thing you know, I was placed in the bedroom with the door closed. I was not happy. I was not happy at all. I let the world know how unhappy I was. Now, sunshine. I was shoved in the bedroom. Were you shoved in the bedroom? No. I was placed in the bedroom. Yeah, and, and what else was in the bedroom? There was food, and there was, there was water. And what else? What else was in the bedroom? Mm, my, oh, I get so sleepy thinking about the bedroom. Um, my toys, I had my favorite Lammy toy, and um, yeah, it was there. And, and what else was there? Go ahead, tell them. There was a special treat. Yes, there was. So, maybe it wasn't so bad being in the bedroom? And, and how long was it? Maybe half an hour? I don't know, I can't read time, but it felt like half an hour. Okay, and did you forgive your mom? Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, so it almost sounds like uh, you had a nice little um, like relaxing hotel away, very short experience to relax and unwind. I wasn't very relaxed and I wasn't unwind at all. No, not at all, but she came and got me, and everything was fine after that. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes a mom has to paint the grout. <laughs> okay, wait. Well, you're very yawny. I think I would have put you back to bed. Okay. Bye, everybody. Happy crafting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, son, for that update. Oh, what is that in your bed? Let me get that. Okay, some piece, random piece of paper. Of course. Of course. Okay. So there you go, folks. Welcome to everybody who is new. Thank you for everybody who spends your time together crafting and uh, having fun. And um, I love going on this journey with you guys. And uh, you are also very appreciated. 
If you do not know, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter where I send you a free digital image each month. Uh, once you sign up for the newsletter, you're also going to get a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it, uh, a list of craft supplies. Um, oh, don't forget, I've got a 25% uh, off my merchandise shop. Uh, which is different than my Etsy shop, just putting that out there. My merchandise shop houses, uh, I have a phrase, create with reckless abandon, or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, and you can have this put placed on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a tote, a mug, a water bottle, you name it, 25% off in the month of November 2022. So there you go. The link is down below in the description box. And uh, great for gift giving for this time of year for yourself, family, or a crafty friend. And also, um, on the newsletter, back, we, yeah, I also give you junk journal tips, updates from me, peeks at new digikits, a list of junk journal supplies to keep your eyes open for, page list of ideas, um, and um, there's something else in there. Can't think of it. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. And... Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, my podcasts. New audio material comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if you would like to watch um, or listen to more podcasts, every other day of the week, I upload a video to Spotify. So you can either listen or watch and listen uh, to that there. And also, um, I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find uh, journals and bundles um, and different kits and things like that when I have them ready and for sale and sometimes I'm going to put a video up about it or sometimes I'm just going to slip them into my uh, um, uh, my Etsy shop and just they're available for whoever happens to come by. Um, Etsy is uh, also home to uh, my vintage digi kits which are basically these if you're looking at what is a digi kit. They are um, five pages of printed uh, beautiful themed images that you can cut out easily and put into your uh, junk journals. Um, I think there's over 180 of them right now, if I counted right. And um, what else? Um, oh, I have fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers. So if you like antique, ledger, if you like old checks, old receipts, old postcards, things like that, uh, 100 plus pieces come in every pack, and that is that includes free priority mail shipping. And um, you can get yourself one of those if you want to see and feel what these old paper... What's all the hoo-ha? What's all the talk about, right? Okay, that will, that will satisfy your thirst for at least five minutes. <laughs> and um, uh, no, I get a lot of stories from folks who get it and um, their spouse thinks, oh, I don't know why you bought a bunch of old papers. And next thing you know, the spouse is sitting down going through the old and interesting collection of ephemera with their mate and they're, they're ooing and aahing over the interesting finds, so... Yeah, I get that, that quite a bit. Um, I have an Amazon shop. If you uh, see me using something, and you're like, hey, what is that? Or where'd you get that? I get that so much. So I started the Amazon shop to um, uh, uh, help my shop, which uh, helps me survive, which is nice. Thank you. But um, you do not pay more for the items because you buy them through my Amazon shop. Just so you know, I'm an affiliate. And I have a merchandise shop, which I explained. And um, you can find me on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun doing weekly and monthly challenges over there. You guys are rocking. I love the stuff you're putting on there. I look over there all the time, and I'm so amazed and intrigued by the vastness of your imagination. You guys, you guys are amazing. My, my finally little brown, somebody thought it was a spider. It does kind of look like a spider. There's a spider on your dauber. There's a spider on... No, it's it's brown thread. So I could denote this was the brown dauber. Um, it is no more. I will just have to know this. Maybe I'll write the word brown. <laughs> um, and most of all, remember that fun can be simple. And we made a whole total of two altered paper clips. They, did, they take a few seconds to make, but the, it's fun. And I'm yapping, so I'm sure you can make them faster than me. But there you go, folks. Have fun, create with reckless abandon, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.